Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 58 and in this episode I'm going to share with you more than 35 new features in Google Apps so let's find out what's new. Let's start with YouTube and it got plenty of new features and changes. Starting with the looks now you will see all the buttons are using apple shaped design also the subscribe button is now in black instead of the red color like before. The comment section got this rounded rectangle to show you the last comment on the video and so on. So you will see a lot of design changes here and there. Uh, the second change is when you go to the library and then go to any of the playlists you have, you will notice a totally different design. The latest video you add it to your playlist will appear at the top in this new design with a fill color that matches the thumbnail colors. Also, all the videos that you will see under your library will have these rounded rectangles that looks a lot nicer than the sharp edges like before. Another thing Google added here is called ambient mode. This ambient mode is only available if you have the dark theme activated. It will give you some nice colors around the video. So if you take a look here at the status bar, you will see a bunch of colors that match the video colors and also under the video. To activate the ambient mode, you need to tap on the gear icon and then you will see an option here called ambient mode that you can turn on or off. And this option will disappear once you activate the light theme back again. Another design change is related to the explore page. Now when you tap the explore button, you will see a side menu with all the options instead of taking you to a separate page. And also when you go inside, you will see a much simpler design that doesn't include a lot of colors, only a basic black text on white background. And that's pretty much it. Now let's talk about the functional changes in the YouTube app. The first one is the ability to pinch to zoom in the landscape view. As you see here, when I pinch to zoom, I can see the zoom level at the top in this small circle. And once I release my finger, it will disappear. That wasn't one of the experimental features available only for YouTube premium users. And now it made its way to the stable version. And also we have now the precise seeking feature. So when you tap and hold on the progress bar and then swipe up, you will see a thumbnail to make it easier for you to navigate the video. You can also see the chapter name that you can tap on it and jump right away to the chapter you want. You can dismiss the precise seeking progress bar by tapping on the X at the top right corner or simply swipe down to minimize it. The third feature, when you open any of the channels and then go to the videos, you will see here we have two separate tabs, one for videos and one for shorts and the third one for live. And instead of having everything under the same tab, now Google separated everything and that's a lot cleaner than before. Now let's move on to iOS to show you the new YouTube widgets that you can also get on Android, but unfortunately none of my phones got it just yet. But anyways, this is how it looks when you tap on YouTube, you will get a small one and a medium size widget. So for example, when we add this to the home screen, now you can immediately access the search. You can go to the home screen, go to shorts, and finally the subscriptions. The smaller one will give you some limited functionality. So let's give it a try. Here is YouTube and the small one will only give you the option to jump to the search. Last but not least, let's talk about the new handles feature. Now content creators can choose a simple and unique name for their channels to make it easier for the viewers to locate them on the web and also mention them in the comments. To activate this feature, you need to go to your YouTube channel and then tap on the edit button and you will see a new item here called handle. Here you can choose the handle you want and if it's available, the YouTube will give you access to it. And once done, people can now reach you by just typing youtube.com and then forward slash the ad sign and the handle. I have it here, IDTR. And when I tap on it, I will go immediately to my channel. You can also use the same handle, which is at IDTR in the comment section if you want to mention me in any of the comments. Next, YouTube Music. 
and the first change is in the home feed now when you scroll down a little bit you will see new cards to recommend for you certain playlists in my case here i have an instrumental arabic it's a playlist that consists of 61 songs and here i have the first three songs in the list so i can start playing immediately i can start a radio for the same type of music or add the whole playlist to my library and when you keep scrolling you might see another one so here I have another one for Arabic music. It includes 79 songs and it has a different color based on the album art or the featured album art. It will match the colors. Uh, one more thing I spotted here for the newly uh, released tracks. You might get also a big card in your home feed to let you know about the newly released tracks in the current week. Next, Google Photos. And if you remember in my previous episode, I showed you the new designs Google added to the collage feature. And after a while, the list of designs is even bigger. So let me show you some of the new ones. So these are the ones I started to see after a while that didn't appear in initially. I used to get only five or six, something like this. But now we have a longer list, as you see here. So you can explore it. And I think you will enjoy all of them. Next, Google Messages. And the first change is the ability to play YouTube videos in picture and picture view. So I sent myself this video and when I tap on it, as you see, it will expand into a floating window. And when you start to position the window, you will see this drop target here at the bottom inside the messages app that you can drop the video in it if you want to stop playing. But previously, when you play a YouTube video, it will play in line, it will play inside the same small window, but now you can play it in picture and picture like this. I also got a couple of new features on my 7 Pro that disappeared after a while, but thankfully I have some screenshots to show you. The first one is the new indicators when you send the message. As you see here, I have two ticks with a fill color and that means the message is sent and read by the recipient. If you only see one tick without a fill color, that means it's sent. If you have two ticks without a fill color, that means it's delivered. So that's pretty much the same thing we have in other chatting apps like WhatsApp. So hopefully it will make its way to the stable version soon. The last one is the ability to reply back to messages by swiping to the right and then type your own message. And this is how it looks. And when you tap on it, it will jump to this message right away, similar to all other chatting apps we use nowadays. And finally, Google Messages got a new icon, same as Google Phone and Contacts. And these are the themed icons. And here are the normal ones. Next, Google Play Store. And the first change is the ability to vote for your favorite Android app of the year. And as you see here, user's choice app. And when you tap on it, you can choose one of these apps and it will end in six days at the time of filming this video. Change number two, when you go to the manage apps and device and then go to the updates, you will see a slightly bigger update button next to each app. And finally, when you make a search, you will see a filter at the top called new. And when you tap on it, it will show you only the new apps and some of them are labeled with the word new in green. Next, the clock app. And now with version 7.3, we can pause the repeated alarms for a certain period of time. Let's say you are on an annual leave and you don't want to delete your alarm. You want to keep it, but you want to pause it for a certain period of time. You will see this new option here called pause alarm with a plus sign. When you tap on it, it will ask you to choose a start and end date. So let's say I want to choose between Monday and the following one. So by this, your alarm will be paused for this specific period of time. And after that, you will see the dates over here. And if you have a one time alarm, you can still schedule it. As you see here, it says schedule alarm. And when you tap on the plus sign, you can set the alarm to ring in a future date. So let's say I want it to be on the 11th of November. And as you see, the date is showing over here. The second change is under the timer page. When you set a timer, you will see a totally different design. The plus one button now shows the seconds. It's a plus one zero zero instead of plus one. The pause and play button looks different and also the reset button. When you set multiple timers, they will appear in a list in a smaller design instead of hiding under the pagination dots. So if you have multiple ones, you can easily see them and you can also change the name by tapping on the top left corner. You can also delete any of them by tapping the X at the top right corner. And when the time is up, you will see also a different screen that has more colors like this one. Next, Google Home. 
And the first change is under routines. Now when you try to add a new one, you will see two different categories. We have the personal, which is the one we used to have for a very long time. And now we have a new category called household. There are some major differences between the two. The first difference is the household routines can be viewed and edited by anyone in your household list, while the personal can only be edited by the person who created them. The second difference is the personal routines can control your smart devices in addition to your Android device, while the household routines are only made for the smart devices. The third and last difference between the two is a new trigger that you can only find under the household routines. When you tap on add a starter, you will see an option here called when a device does something. So as an example, let's say when I turn on my uh, desk lamp, I want to do a specific action like adjust the assistant volume, for example, and so on and so forth. It doesn't require a hot word or anything like that, but it requires an action to be taken on this specific device to start the routine. When you go to the personal routines, you won't find this option. So let me show you this. When you go to personal, add a starter, there is no option here called when a device does something. Another change related to Google Home is the ability to access your smart cameras through the web by going to home.google.com and sign in with the same Google account. If you have any of the supported Nest cameras, you should see the cameras over here and choose the one you want to preview and that will give you a remote access. The website is still in public preview, so it's not complete yet. And if you don't have any devices, it will ask you to go to the Google Home app. And you can see now on the screen the list of supported Nest cameras and doorbells. Next, Google Assistant. And now when you trigger it, you will see a new button here in the Google Assistant card. It says more things you can try. When you tap on this button, it will take you to a totally new page that will explain to you how to use Google Assistant in all situations. Here you have control your favorite apps with your voice. Uh, you have another section use assistant while driving, cooking, getting ready. There are some basics communication. So you will get a revamped page that will give you tons of ideas and tips on how to use Google Assistant, which is something I've never seen before. And at the top, you will see this carousel that will give you quick shortcuts to certain things like the assistant settings, routines, interpreter mode, and Google Lens. Talking about Google Assistant, Assistant voice typing in Gboard also got a couple of new changes. The first one, when you start the feature, you will see a new back button on the left instead of the commands button that you can tap on to quit the feature and that makes it more obvious. And also the speak now text is much bigger and it will let you know if it's listening or not like in this case. The second change is the suggested emojis based on the words you're saying. So for example, happy birthday. As you see, once I stop talking, it suggested for me a happy birthday emoji. Let's try that again. Happy birthday. So you can tap on it and use it right away while typing. Next. Google Lens. And now you can see all the tabs available in the camera preview before even starting the camera. So you can make your choice from here. And once you are done, you can tap on the camera preview to jump right away to this tab. The second change is on the web. Now when you go to google.com, you will see a new lens button in the search box. And when you click on it, it will give you the option to upload an image from your PC or to paste the image URL. Either way, Google Lens will start automatically once the upload is done and give you all the information you need to know about the image. Next, Google One. And it got a redesigned home page. You will see a two by two grid that has all the information you need to know. Starting with the storage, it will show you a circular design instead of the linear design like before. Then you have the most recent backup for the device you are currently using. And when you tap on view, it will take you to the backup page so you can check more information. After that, you have a card for cleaning up your storage. And in this case, it will give you some suggestions over here. And finally, you have the VPN option. If you have Google VPN or Google One VPN, you will be able to connect from here. Then the rest of the page is exactly the same. Nothing else is different. Now let me show you a couple of new changes related only to the Pixel users. And the first one is the more weather information you will see in the At A Glance widget. In this case, I have the high and low temperatures and also the weather condition. This feature was only available on the Pixel 7 models, but now you will be able to see it on the Pixel 6 models and later. 
This feature will only work till 10 a.m. and after that, your at a glance widget will return back to normal. The second change is the ability to use the face unlock to make payments on the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro models after updating Google Play services to October security patch. And finally, the digital well-being widget now has a refresh button at the top right corner. So if you want to make sure you have the latest information, you can tap the refresh button to see your screen on time. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new features I wanted to show you in Google Apps, please let me know in the comments if you spotted anything new so I will include in my future episodes. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you the next video.